Hey oh everybody, Haku here with my live reaction to read through Fort Boku no Hero Academia chapters 428 and 429 and I'm doing two this week because last week I was kind of running behind and I put a poll up I was like is this week's chapter worth reacting to on its own because some of these chapters they've been good I've been loving the ending but it's like is did enough happen to warrant reacting on its own or should I wait and let two chapters pile up? And I probably won't do that again because I think we only have one or two left after this video. So uh, we don't really have enough left to do that again. I'm excited to get into this because, I mean, I've seen some people complain here and there about the ending. But just, I don't know. I've liked it. I thought it was a good ending. I think with any single long-running series for any ending ever, you're going to have ways where you can look at it and say... This could have been done this way, and I, like, not, so many people would word it of, it could have been better if it was done this way, but really, it could have better fit me if it was done this way. I think you can say that about any kind of ending, and I'm totally the way with uh, My Hero Academia. I feel like if we had taken, like, a hundred more chapters, and taken when we get when we first got introduced to like the paranormal liberation army lieutenants and all the like three important underlings beneath them if we had developed them into real characters and like gotten some like 1v1 fights for the end for like class 1a some of the important class uh what is it 1b uh some of these other characters just given them like personal close-up 1v1 type fights that would have fit me personally more. I don't know if it would have been better, but I just, I guess I like the generic shonen formula and My Hero Academia, as much as people might want to say, oh, it's green Naruto. The thing is, Hero Academia doesn't really fit the typical shonen formula most of the time. It kind of does its own thing. Again, we didn't have these 1v1 fights, even for important characters for the most part. It was just a big group effort to get through this final arc. Uh, so I have been enjoying it. There are ways that of course I think it could be better, but I just don't know how you can go through a lot of long-running shonen and think that the ending here is bad because, like, as much as I love and adore the big three, as much as they were all so deeply important to me, it's like, well, Bleach has always had a style, always been, you know, strengths and weaknesses, the the overall writing and characters have never been the best, but it's always had an awesome world with awesome art, awesome characters, like character designs, awesome powers, and you read it or watch it, and it's like, that's the focus. It's about these cool fights, these cool powers, and this cool world, and everything looks gorgeous, but the overall story's never been that great. Naruto fell apart and, like, fell off extremely hard. It completely just destroyed and went back on some of the core tenets of the series. One Piece is currently in the midst of, I mean, the long fall off from post time skip not being that great, Wano being absolutely awful. Some really great stuff still happening in One Piece, but it's like, how do you recover from some of the things that, again, happened in Wano that go completely against the ideas that the series presents? And... You know, you have all these others. I read The Promised Neverland on the channel. Of course, after Goldie Pond, that falls off really, really bad. And you see all these long-running shonens completely fall apart. And to me, My Hero Academia didn't do that. Sure, I think towards the end, it's like, I think some of the beginning stuff is way more exciting to me than some of the ending stuff. But I think that about basically every series ever. But I really don't think Hero Academia fell off that much. If anything, like for most of those series I brought up, the final arc is the lowest point. The final arc is the worst arc to me, where I think the lowest point in My Hero Academia is Joint Training Arc. And I don't even think the Joint Training Arc is that bad. I think it's not even that bad, and that's the worst one. That's the low point. That's the trough of Hero Academia. Um, so yeah, with kind of... A bit of a discussion on the ending here aside, uh, I'm excited to see what we get into here. I don't think there's going to be anything that, again, unless they do some crazy stuff that completely goes against the ideas presented in the series, 
Uh, I don't think there's going to be anything that I'm going to absolutely hate besides the inevitable. I've been saying it and saying it. I feel like we're inevitably going to get just a chapter or a section of a chapter where we're basically jumping around like, and this character ended up with this character, and this character ended up with this character. And I hate when series do that at the end. When they're like right at the end, we haven't like firmly established any romantic relationships during the series itself, but we're just going to take the last chapter and be like, yeah, this person with this and this with this. like I hate when series do that um, so with that in mind I feel like that's inevitable to happen at some point and I feel like if it doesn't do that that's gonna be a pleasant surprise and if it does do that that's probably gonna be one of the only parts that I don't enjoy but either way let's actually get into reading for 28 and we do have a new volume cover that I was able to put up here for you but as usual with Shueisha I am not showing this uh, we're starting out with Ida and the rest of, I guess maybe these are the new students? I saw his life battle against, or against All for One. I've been a fan of Todoroki since the sports festival. Same, he's the reason I chose this career path. Same here, me too. That's right, we did see them at the end of the last chapter I read. Please understand that your role models are only human. You mustn't hound them lest you turn into an unruly mob and frighten them. Happy to chat, but one at a time, please. We have uh, Shoto. See, it takes a lot to make Todoroki flee from a conversation. <laughs> they were running in the hallway, Prez. You hear me? Running. Indeed, rules exist for a reason. <laughs> Furthermore, they're still convalescing in the wake of their battles. Grant them the rest and repose they require. We're so sorry about this. We spotted them and couldn't help ourselves. Like, I think also, something else while I was talking about things that I think you could do that would make me like the series even more overall. One thing I think that could have been done, like I said, adding a hundred more chapters to develop the side characters more, but specifically with that, give us another year. Let us see the characters in their second year for a bit. Um, and then as part of that, instead of just having Izuku it felt like throughout the first half, or maybe even the first like 75% of the series, Izuku had a really slow growth where he really fought for every new ability he got, every new thing he learned. He really, really fought for that, and it took a while, and we really, really focused on that. Then for the last like 25% or whatever, we just speed ran through him getting like really, really, really strong. If we added like, again, 100 more chapters to have Izuku's buildup be a bit more gradual, I think that maybe could have helped the series out too. Uh, but this is number 428, The Girl Who Loves Smiles. We're so sorry about this. We spotted them and couldn't help ourselves. I would have thought Bakugo relishes in it, or relishes an adoring crowd. Even he gets flustered by that many fans, I guess. We have Shinzo and Sero. Huh, er, meh, must be nice, says Kaminati. Girls have always kept their di er, distance from Gatchan, so maybe he's not used to female attention. I've known him for years. Oh, surprising. Not surprising at all, damn it. I'll give the guy props for his heroics, but bad boys do not deserve to get chicks, says Mineta. Get lost already. Eek, sorry again. Right, not surprising. Now I see it. <laughs> yeah, of course. E excuse me? Midoriya-senpai. Um, I saw you in that fight, and it gave me all sorts of courage. So we have this new first year with an actual design? Then again, a lot of, I say that as if all of the background characters don't typically have pretty creative designs in Hero Academia. Like, I felt I had to stand up and do something myself. You were super inspiring. I really mean it. So, uh, thank you. And sorry to bother you. Really? Izuku doesn't look bad in this panel. I feel like it uh, hasn't taken me that long to get used to the new look. Like, it looks, I think, a lot better in this panel than we were when we were like first introduced to the new look. And he thinks about Spinner. Uh, oh, okay. Then Midoriya and Todoroki get a pass, but bad boys don't deserve chicks. My soul won't accept it. Hey, come on, those battles were nuts, yeah? And then, and they were at the center of it all, so can you really blame those kids? And we go to the staff room. The media is asking to interview Class 2A again. I'm saying no. Some of them would or some of them would welcome the chance, yes. Mineta for one, says Ectoplasm, but others wouldn't. They take priority. Today, we're on reconstruction duty. If it ain't class one A, 
We have Fat Gum and Best Genist. Pumped to be working with you, Fat. You bet. Sun Eater's here too as my sidekick. This way, you all. Bring all the metal over here, please. Or er, first, we level the ground, right? Then, quite the damage denim, aren't you? You really ought to be recuperating, yet here you are. Caught John doing light lifting, so you're still a pipsqueak. Worry not, I'm recovering, albeit slowly. I even have hands now, and we see the dead shot survived. Again, Bakugo surviving is something I've seen people complain about, and I kind of get it, but a big point of it was that, like, the heroes wouldn't settle for anything other than, like, a complete victory. And it fits with their characters. Everything we had with Bakugo after getting revived with his final fight with um, All for One was a really good moment to me. I just think, again, maybe this kind of goes back on the whole stakes thing or the whole perfect victory thing. But I think maybe Edshot giving his life to save Bakugo or to revive Bakugo maybe would have made it better. But then Edshot just gets to survive. But these are like really... To me, like, to some people, these are, like, huge deals, but to me, it's just a small nitpick. Um, will you ever get back to normal? From the outset, I intended to seize the day in triumph. And then we have a sort of half-smile. And we see Uraraka picking up the rubble with the rest of them. Hey, youngsters, how about lunch? Check it out, Onigiri. For us, Really? My property got blown off the map in the big battle. We'll bring it all back. I'm sorry, says Izuku. Not at all. I don't mean to say I hold it against you. When we saw you bunch fighting the good fight, we realized we had no business sitting around moping. Er, can't ask you to handle this job all on our, er, all on your own. Now we're ready to step up and do our part to rebuild too. This old man looks actually like really cool. I like his design. After this awesome feast you laid out, we'll finish the job today. Might be a little short-handed to get it done that quickly. Hmm? Huh? No other bus was scheduled to show up. Sorry, Eraserhead. We have a gloomy Sementos? My class insisted on apologizing. We're sorry again about earlier. We didn't consider what you've been through. These first years are seriously intense, says Kaminari. And then, and why'd you humor them? Their extreme remorse got to me. You senpai fought so hard for everyone, so now we want to help you out in return. We may not have our provisional licenses, and the school year has only just begun. But let us do whatever we can. Attend to minor tasks, okay? And don't be getting in the way of the second year students. Yes, sir. These underclassmen are mysterious entities for real. We didn't prep lunch for so many, though. It's fine. We already ate. Not sure how this came about. But I suppose one good turn er, one turn of good hard work inspires the next, and so on. Ochako, yeah. Little by little, things are taking a positive turn. What a relief! I wanted more for Tsuyu as well. I feel like she didn't really get to do much. That's all. I'm good, Tsuyu. Anyway, which onigiri flavor do you want, Deku? Er, Takana greens? Wow, same here. Yeah, Takana and Umaboshi pickled plums are top tier flavors. What a feast. And we get the same zucchine sound effect. 7 p.m. They eased up on the dur er, dormitory requirements. Those who wanted to move back home were allowed to do so. Uraraka said she's heading home for a bit. Ochako hasn't read my latest texts. Ah, crap, what now? I messed up big time in the rush to get here in the chopper. I didn't realize the camera battery was dead. That day, there was no camera there to capture. The end of our battle. The cityscape's looking back to normal already. Little by little, things are taking a positive turn. What a relief. You know what could have been a crazy thing for Horikoshi to have done? But absolutely, I don't believe that he would actually do in a million years, because it would just... I, guess, I think it would be too edgy. I think it would be too out there would be to have Uradaka have actually died during the Toga fight and Toga taken on her appearance and live to carry on her will. But again, that is like way too out there, I feel like. Feels like nothing has gotten better ever since then. 
It's like the sun is setting and the shadows are growing long. Unlike those other times, it's really over now. Everything's been settled, and that's a good thing. The world's facing forward, ready to bring it all back. I love the fact that everyone's smiling again, and she tears up. And I don't want to be a party pooper. She thinks about Toga. That's why. Just like before, I'm dealing with this lasting pain by shutting it all away. And she cries on her own. But Izuku found her. Uraraka, are we going to get the final sort of... Like, whether they end up together or not, the final sort of act of the Uraraka and Izuku relationship. I do think that Uraraka's finale with Toga was possibly the highlight of the entire finale arc to me. It's either that, or I feel like the stuff with the regressing Benjamin Button all for one, I think all of that stuff from the stuff with Endeavor, going to the other heroes, going to All Might and Stain, and then finally to Bakugo, I feel like all of that was great. I do feel like the Shoji and Spinner stuff was very, very good, but I think the peak to me might have been the Uraraka Toga stuff. That stuff just hit so, so hard for me. And also, I think the the segment of the Izuku Shigaraki stuff where they were going through the memories and, you know, reverting back to their, like, younger selves, I think that was very well done, too. That's something else that, again, before I jump into the next chapter, again, I'm bringing up a lot of just things that I saw other people complaining about just because, you know, discussion of Hero Academia. I feel like you come here not just to see me just sit and read the chapters. I feel like that'd be incredibly boring because you could just read the chapters yourself. But, you know, also just to hear somebody talk about Hero Academia a little bit. Something else I saw people complain about was the fight between... Um, Izuku and Shigaraki, since I thought about them going through their memories, it reminded me. That fight not having the best choreography and being like, you can do better choreography. Horikoshi's done it with, like, Izuku versus Bakugo after the provisional license exam. And I think that fight is kind of an exception. Because for the most part, you can see here, sorry, on the channel, I have read from chapter 1 all the way now to chapter 429 we're going into... And after reading all of that, my opinion on My Hero Academia's fights, the choreography's never been that good compared to other shonen. Like, ever. The choreography's never been that good. Again, I've talked a lot recently in the Chainsaw Man video I recently did, and I talked a little in the beginning here, where I was like, Bleach had its strengths and weaknesses. Hero Academia has had its strengths and weaknesses. And, like, when it comes to its greatest strength, it's the emotion. I think that the overall story was very good. Not the best, but it was very good. I think it's better than most long-running shonen, actually. I think it actually held up, and probably going back through, will hold up pretty well in comparison to most. Um, I think that, you know, the actual choreography of the fights is a weak point. Uh, sometimes the readability of movement is not even that great at all. It's kind of uh, difficult in Hero Academia at times. But I think the greatest strength in every aspect of Hero Academia, whether it's the conversations that characters have, whether it's the fights, it's emotion. There will be fights in some other, like, anime or manga with this really good, really intricate choreography, and I will love it for just that. I will love it for just mindless, cool fight. But it doesn't really make me feel anything other than that's cool. But I think that My Hero Academia's fights have made me feel more than pretty much any shonen ever. Like when I think about Izuku versus Bakugo I mentioned was like really good choreography wise, but it was really good emotion wise too. But then when I think about all for One versus All Might. Both times, really. It's about the emotion. Especially that first time, it's about the emotion. When I think about Izuku versus Shoto with the, at the um, tournament arc, the sports festival. That, again, that was a very emotional fight. When I think about possibly my favorite, um, Izuku versus Muscular, very emotional. I actually think that might be like third place or second place. That might be somewhere around there. Uh, my favorite probably is Izuku versus Bakugo after the um, after the 
the provisional license exam, stain, or not stain, um, the stain fight again was about the emotion. There was some intricate stuff in there, but it was about the emotion with the three characters facing off against stain. When I think about another of my favorites, Endeavor versus High End, that is one of my favorite fights, and that's about the emotion. That's what uh, Endeavor's character is going through. Then you've got Kirishima and Fatgum versus uh, Rapa and Tengo? Tengo or Tengu? I don't remember. Um, but that fight, again, it was about getting Kirishima's backstory, the emotion of him not thinking he's good enough, and then ste or stepping up there at the end. I think, again, where Hero Academia excels is in the emotion. And so, yeah, I think, again, when it comes to the final fight, People have complained about it not having the best choreography, and some people are like, ah, well, it's because of the types of powers they have. I don't think that that means that it has to be bad choreography. I just think that Hero Academia has never had very good choreography. Or in the very, like, occasional, like, time that it has, that's the exception, not the norm for the series. That is one of the series' weaknesses. But its strength is in the emotion, and I think it did the emotion. Again, it could have been even better, or at least more to my liking personally, but what we got I think was very, very, very good. There were a lot of times that had me really choked up. Again, I was here tearing up and a lot of my reactions for that stuff. So again, what it made me feel going through it is I think what the series was aiming for and I think that's where it nailed it. Um, but yeah, with again, more discussion out of the way, let's read 429. And we start 429 with this really cute color spread for Class 1A with All Might, Naizawa, and Shinso. Or I guess Class 2A now. That's something new to get used to. And we start off with... This is 421, I Am Here. Okay, that is a great title. Gets me excited. Uh, but we're starting out with a narration or thought box here. All I heard about my quirk was that it was a freak variant unrelated to any others in my family's history. Out of nowhere, my mom, dad, sister, uncle, aunt, grandma, grandpa, and great-grandpa stopped being nice to me. They tied me up and locked me in the basement. I was so scared and sad, I started crying and screaming, so they sewed my mouth shut to keep it from opening wide. Is this going to be the person that we saw in uh, that one weird scene from a couple chapters ago that was never explained? I don't know how many years went by. But one day, they told me, the country's doomed, and tossed a bunch of water and baked goods at me. After that, I never saw them again. So is is the final act of Hero Academia going to be Izuku saving this guy? Because this is somebody that was, like, in a horrible situation. Again, people just locked him away, sewed his mouth shut, abandoned him with just some water and baked goods. This is somebody who has been through a horrible, horrible ordeal. Is the final bit going to be them being saved? And that's like the like big final act of heroism for the, uh, for the manga. Some more time passed, and with a big crash, something cut an opening down into my basement. Just like that, I was free to go outside. The sunlight was painful and scary because I wasn't used to it. What had I done wrong? Why did I have to feel so sad? All this time I've been so scared and sad. So why are all of these people smiling so much? And we see them. So yeah, this definitely looks like what we saw a couple chapters ago. I've always loved seeing people smile. That's why I set out to be a hero, and we're going into Ochako. Ochako, you coulda. Just done the right thing like a plain old hero yet. Yet you went above and beyond and spared a thought for me. I... I got to live on at the cost of Himiko's life the confirmation that Toga did die. It's my fault she's... Uraraka. And Izuku runs over. D Deku, why are you here? How'd you... I just knew somehow, so I leapt over with, a, er, with one for all. Because this is the spot where we had our heart to heart. That's not what I meant. I said I was heading home for now, which would have been fine, but I had a feeling you'd be here. Why come, though, when I don't feel like being seen? Sorry, but I want you to show me what you're going through. Because, Uraraka, you've always been this way. 
even back during the entrance exam. It's my quirk. Sorry for stopping you, but, well, it's a bad omen to trip and fall. And with the points we needed to pass, can you give him some of the points I earned? All along, without fail, Pateku, well, it just screams do your best. I kind of like it. You prioritize others over yourself. During the sports festival, too, every time since way back. And then, you've been saving me every step of the way. You're my hero. Man. Really good scene. Which is why I can't keep taking that strength of yours for granted. Holding a hand can be enough to soothe the pain. Man, and I love to, like he brings up holding a hand and we see how messed up his hands are. Himiko, she, when heroes need protecting, it's my fault she's dead. If only I didn't get stabbed. If only my head wasn't pu er, full of pointless thoughts. Because her quirk let her share blood with others. But it didn't have to end like that. I bet I could have found another way. And, man, again, this is just a really good scene. What she's going through, blaming herself, even for things that she really, really, really couldn't have helped in any way. But I also love this when heroes need protecting stuff. Because just like Shigaraki was hero to the villains, Izuku has been hero to the heroes. He is brought gentle, like somebody who was cast away by society to become a villain. Uh, let him be a hero. He has been a part of bringing Shoto and Endeavor back from who they were and the route that each of them were going to who Endeavor and Shoto are now. And the same for all of his classmates. And Uraraka, his, even though, again, I hate that she didn't get to do more and be around more in the actual story, when she has been around, she has been a pillar supporting him. So now, of course, he has to, like, like, really, she's been a pillar supporting him, and you can be like, oh, yeah, she was inspired by a lot of the things he was doing, but he's never really done things for Uraraka like he's done for a lot of the other characters. So this is like him opening up to her or really letting her open up to him and being a pillar for her is finally paying back what she's been doing for him emotionally. If only I'd figured her out sooner. Maybe it would have gone differently if we'd met as little kids. Again, things that she completely couldn't help whatsoever, but she has to now live with because... Somebody died to save her, and now she's here and they aren't. Who will be there, t again, when a hero needs protecting, who will be there to protect them? I get it. The same thing's been weighing on me about Tenko. About Tomura Shigaraki, I mean. I was told that I couldn't tackle that battle the same way as all the others. All for one himself said it, that the path I chose was a thorny one. Even so, I know if we keep going above and beyond to reach out, even when nobody's asking, it'll make a difference. Yeah, she really is here. And we see Dark Shadow. Uraraki, we're here, or Uraraka, we're here for you too. And we have all the rest of the class. Oh, Chaco, you silly head. I was waiting for you to open up to me. You know you can say whatever is on your mind. And we see the Ember still in Izuku. That was a big burst you used to get here. How's the Ember doing? It's fine. Huh? The Ember. Wait, you mean... No, hold on. Why didn't you say anything? I completed one for all. That amalgamation of power, woven together by courage and heroism. <laughs> we see these statues at the entrance to the school, and one of them is of, Ma is of Monoma. And then we have Jiro and Eddie. That's so cute. And Aoyama's there. Going forward... As long as everyone contributes to the, er, to the weaving, and we see it's a farewell Aoyama party. Broadening the scope of the billboard chart, you say? That's one part of the plan, yeah. But only once the country's on its feet again, of course. It's clear that plenty of folks besides us pro-heroes played a huge role in the war. Which is why we should also be giving props to the heroes in the original sense of the word. Not just currently employed, professional capital H heroes. I thought you might want to lean away from the whole popularity contest altogether. That didn't make sense if you're only seeing the cons of the system and none of the pros. But I'm talking about an update, 
that doesn't toss the baby out with the bathwater. And he thinks about Endeavor and the effect that Endeavor had on him as a kid. Because even the greatest of all time can only handle so much. And if we're hoping to save more folks, those saviors gotta include more than just us pros. I see. In the hopes of cultivating any number of great heroes. Mm-hmm. And we see this guy walking down the street. I wonder... I, w I was going to say this is Izuku's act of heroism, but I wonder if instead of it being Izuku reaching out to help him, remember before what made Shigaraki into who Shigaraki was as he went through this horrible stuff and everyone just ignored him. And here what Hawks is talking about is not just respecting pro heroes, but anybody who does good for others, like any hero in any sense of the word. What if the people just around see this guy and instead of ignoring him like what happened with Shigaraki the people come around to help this guy and it's not that it's not that oh Izuku does a heroic thing for this guy it's that Izuku said to Shigaraki when he was dying it has been destroyed this shows that the society that ignores people the society that lets people slip through the cracks Shigaraki successfully destroyed it, and Izuku successfully, along with everybody else, built up a new society of people who won't just ignore someone like that. Why? Just me. Why did I suffer? You there, boy. And again, we have the same... Okay, they're making it a very extreme... Like, he didn't have to show the Tenko panels to show us this ex this parallel. I guess, though, they're sh I guess, actually, they're showing us the parallel, because I guess this is meant to be the same woman, only even older now. The same woman now sees this boy. I still wonder whether or not a hero helped that little boy after I walked away. Now and then it keeps me up at night. So again, I think this is what it is. It's showing us that Shigaraki successfully destroyed the society that left him behind, and Izuku successfully brought in a new society that helps people. That day, Izuku Midoriya demonstrated to society the need to support each other. He taught us that sitting back and doing nothing isn't an option. I know that he did hit home with society, and I bet that some way, or someday soon, and we see Izuku and Ura, oh man, I'm getting emotional at this, the two of them looking on as just random, faceless people, again, drawn as sketches, completely faceless, go to help him. Soon, or you'll be just fine, because Granny's here to help. Again, just like the I am here stuff, but it's not just pro heroes anymore, it's society. Hey, is all well, you two? Heroes will have time to kill. Again, like Hawks' dream. Like Hawks' dream, heroes will have plenty of time on their hands, because regular everyday citizens will help people in need. That is, like, so much better than even I thought it would be. Like, they could have had, oh, new villain to show Izuku's, like, last big act, act of heroism for the series to show how he's changed things. But this is so, so great because this is kind of an epilogue moment for the effect that Izuku had on society and the effect that Shigaraki had on society, showing that the fight wasn't meaningless, showing that all of this destruction, all of the deaths that came about, all of this clash between the heroes and villains changed society the way it was so that less people like Shigaraki can end up how he ended up. And I think that, yeah, that was so much more better so much more, but so much better. So much better than even I expected or thought that plot line would go. Like, I know you saw me during the reaction working my way through it to figure it out. Um, but yeah, with all of with all of that aside, I'm going to end things here. Thank you. I think we might have a chapter or two left. Not very many. Uh, it was good. I actually think if we leave it he, if we leave Izuku and Ochako's relationship, because that's what the first part of the chapter was about, if we leave that as is, and we don't get hard confirmation, oh, this person ends up with this person, I actually think that's better, because it leaves it to the imagination. It leaves 
where these characters go. Like, we see how the story ended, but we don't know how, like, where these characters ended up. It leaves you to fill in the blanks yourself. And while if there was a really, really satisfying way to wrap all of those things up, then that might be good. But it's it's better to leave it it's better to leave certain things open-ended so that you can fill it in with what you think happened or what you wanted to happen than to have an unsatisfying ending to it. Like, I would rather have characters, again, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this character ends up with this character, that character ends up with that character. Um, I would like that less than just leaving it open-ended. I would enjoy it more to leave it open-ended and you can kind of just think characters ended up wherever you wanted them to end up than for them to do that and it to be disappointing and it to be not well done. And I think that like in one or two chapters, it wouldn't be extremely well done. So I'm actually like if the series ended here on this, I would be cool with this as a series ending. I might not even need another chapter, honestly, but I think we have another chapter or two, so I guess we'll have to see see where that ends up, see where that takes us. Either way, I guess like if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of these chapters, my first thoughts and reaction. Lots of discussion for this one, lots of yapping, but again, without that, these wouldn't be very long videos, I feel like. Uh, subscribe for more Hero Academia, much more on the channel. Once all these chapters are done, if you're interested, I'd love to do a stream to do, like, either a stream or a video, a stream would be fun, to do a character ranking for the Hero Academia characters. I think that'd be a fun thing to do. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'll try to figure out when I would do it and everything. Sorry about that hiccup. But um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, follow on Twitter if you want. Again, I still need to review Season 5. I watched it a bit ago. Then I need to watch and review Season 6 and Season 7. And I don't know what they're going to do for the finale, because it really feels like... I don't know what the... Like, where is Season 7 going to end? Um, so I, I'll figure out what to do covering the anime eventually as well. Um, follow on Twitter if you want. If you want to link to the Discord server, it's free and open for anyone. If you'd like to help support the channel by dropping a super thanks, it'd be appreciated. If you would like to uh, help support the channel and get your name at the end of every video and get One Piece videos a bit early, then you can uh, hit join down below to become a member or go to patreon.com slash of the tubes or a link will be in the description to become a patron. Thank you so much to people who are already patrons and members. Thank you to Chosen Regular Evan, Holly, Magical Girls, Efra Nono, Abyss Knight, J.A., and Dee Dee Van. Uh, Cheriton Students, David Langstaff, and Volded Ghoul, Slayer Candidates, S.G. and Stan Cedar, and Pure Element, Pate Ardiawl. Thank you so, so much for your support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.